head, that ball just goes on to hit the stumps over there. Um, Singapore lose their fifth, unfortunately, just as these two looked to be settling in quite nicely and perhaps looking at taking the score to about 80 to 90 runs. And she is dismissed by Kuruni Ota, who adds to her list of international wickets. And she is growing that tally with every game that she plays. A wonderful bowler for Japan, a good servant of the game over there. We have the new batter on strike taking guard. Umpire Burrs indicating that she's now on middle stump. Uh, Lone striker is making her way back slowly. We will find out quite quickly who the batter is. And the new batter is Lassia Bomaredi. Right, she is going to face Kurumi Ota, who is on fire over here. She's been bowling well. She's been bowling straight. She comes, she bustles in, and that one straight at the stumps again. Another appeal for LBW, this time turned down by Empire Burrs. May have been going down lakeside just slightly. That was another wonderful ball and a brilliant ball to bowl first up to a player coming into bat at number seven. Wonderful straight delivery. A dot ball to follow that. Uh, the ball just grazed the batter's thigh pad as a trickle through to the keeper. Ooh, ooh, bit of a confusion there between the batters and eventually they take a safe single that was hit in a awkward manner by the batter who sort of walked across the stumps made the contact and that ball then went in the gap between the two fielders on the offside it looks like there was always a run on but the batters were very unsure initially as to how close the fielders were to the ball and that led to the hesitation eventually they managed to get a safe single singapore scored now climbing to 55 for five another waft outside of off stump this time more like a cut shot but the batter failed to make contact with that and that goes up to the keeper Otasan really bowling well over here, sticking to the basics, just enough variations uh, without giving away too many free deliveries. Inchi bustles again, bowls that one another straight delivery angled into the stumps he played well by the batter hit straight back into the ground one bounce and kurumi ota feels it off her own bowling that is the end of her second over 13 overs gone now singapore at 55 for five and there we have on our screens projected score at current run rate singapore is likely to reach 84 if they score at six per over here onwards they will get to 97 which I think is something that they will be happy with, whether they manage to score at that high a run rate, especially with the lower batting order, uh, so it remains to be seen. Not, not oftentimes we see the lower order contribute that much, especially at a higher run rate compared to the top order. But stranger things have happened in sport, and we never know. We might get a scenario like that, and that would lead us to a really good game. Yanagida-san returns for her second over. 
in chickens that is plated with a straight bat that goes to the extra cover field there, quite close in within the circle, um, no single at all over there, bat is still drawn. Ooh, that's an outside edge. The bat egg shuffles outside of off stump again, just like she did in the last over. This time she gets an edge, and obviously that one couldn't go to hand because such a thickish edge. The keeper had no way to get to that ball. Um, they take a single, and that brings Shafina Mahesh onto this strike. Oh, good ball by Yanagi the Sun. Rattles that off stump over there. Absolutely beautiful flight. Just a little bit of drift onto the off stump over there. Beaten in flight, the batter was, and couldn't just make contact at all. It almost ended up being a Yorker then sort of delivery. And there goes the bales off the stumps. Singapore now 56 for 6. Yanagida san gets her name on the scorecard with a wicket. And Shafina Mahesh innings comes to an end. She has scored 13 of 18 deliveries, bowled by an absolute beauty of a delivery by my Yanagida. I guess Singapore can now sort of stick to playing out the last remaining six and a half overs hopefully hoping that they might not get all out as they did yesterday oftentimes the longer you stay at the crease somehow the runs manage to come around but you need to be there at the crease you can't get wickets if you're out and back in the hutch and i think this is a message probably their coach has been telling them and from what I hear, Divya GK might be their player coach as well. This was mentioned by some of the viewers on the YouTube comments yesterday. So I'm not sure whether that is actually true or whether they have a dedicated coach. Yanagida san continues to bowl over here. She's got two left in this over. Another beautifully loopy flighted delivery. Uh, the batter is not taking any risk whatsoever with that. I'm fairly certain that the new batter who is on strike, that is Ishita Shukla. She is probably aware of her batting capabilities and doesn't want to overreach. That's a good short ball, uh, almost sort of in a hittable arc. The batter not taking advantage of that. No runs taken. Singapore remain at 56 for 6 at the end of 14 overs. That brings Lassia Bombaredi onto a strike. And it looks like Kurumi Ota will continue to bowl at the other end. So this will be her third over on the trot. And why not? When you're bowling that well, there's no reason why you should be taken off the attack after two overs. Bowlers normally like to be in good rhythm and once they are in a good rhythm they want to continue bowling and finish off a longish spell so that they can maximize um, their rewards that's another good delivery a little bit of a swing into the batter over there kept out by the batter along the carpet that one was I feel this converging on the leg side and it's nice to see the Japanese players sort of knowing the role of good fielding over here. They're not leaving it to just one of their teammates to do the work. Everybody is trying to play their part over here. That's well fielded by Kurumi off her own bowling. And again, we see four fielders converging in, two from the offside, two from the leg side. Their body language says how pumped up they are, how much they want to be involved in this game. It's not often that you see a player coming from um, extra cover mid off when the balls hit towards mid on. And Yanagida san has got a good uh, sort of fielding spread out there on the offside. She's got three pretty much at the circle and 
extra cover seems to be a little bit more closer than the other three. So she's trying to stop those singles through the offside over there. And to her credit, Kurumi Ota is bowling up to that plan. She's not giving a lot of leg side deliveries. This one was hit on the leg side by the batter over there, but it wasn't because it was a bad ball. It was just a really decent piece of batting, maybe a slightly inside on the inside half of the bat. It was a straight delivery though. In we go again. Good straight ball outside of off stump. Well played. Kurumi-san in for the last delivery of this over, bustles in, bolts it dead straight again. It's as if those thumbs have got a big target painted on them. That's the end of the over. Singapore finish at 57 for 6 after 15 overs. Kurumi Ota with one wicket for 6 runs at the end of 3 overs. I suspect she will come back later and finish her full quota of 4 overs. So of the 5 overs left, I think she'll bowl one, Ahilya Chandel will bowl one, and we might see Elena bowl the other, so that's three, and perhaps uh, Yanagida-san, and uh, maybe Fujikawa-san might take the other one. We'll have to wait and see what decision the skipper makes. Current projected score is down to 76 from 84. And it just shows that the run rate has also been uh, d uh, sort of declining. So not only have the Japanese bowlers pegged back the Singaporean innings with regular wickets, but they have also restricted the scoring quite admirably over here. Mai Yanagida continues. Uh, she is in her third over now. That one's hit to mid-wicket. The batsers take just a single. And I think this would be the more appropriate strategy for Singapore over here. Eschew as much risk as they can. Try to hit it either in the gaps or keep it along the ground. Possibly take the singles uh, and uh, maybe the odd double depending on how well they're able to hit in the gaps and how shrewd a judge of run they are. That one beats the bat. Uh, good ball by Mai Yanagida. And she comes, and that one's on target again, just hurrying up the batter a little bit, who manages to keep that ball out, and she bats it towards the point region. Uh, no run on offer there, as there was a fielder to cut it off quite quickly. Oh, that's a bit of a grubber, and rightfully called no ball by the umpires. Um, they recently were a change in the law a few years ago. Previously, the ball had to bounce more than twice to be called a no-ball. Now the ball gets called a no-ball after the second bounce. And as you see, there's a signal for the free hit, which the batter takes a full advantage of, tries to hit it as hard as she can. Oh my god, there's a misunderstanding, and there's a run out in the process. Both batters stranded at one end. Looks like lots of miscommunication. What an unfortunate way to get out of a free hit. That is the only way, well, one of the only ways you can get out of a free hit, the other being obstructing the field. And what a sad, sad state of affairs as the batter slips. That is indeed uh, quite unfortunate for Singapore over there. I mean, Japan won't be... Uh, 
complaining about this. Um, it was Ishita Shukla who lost her footing and she has been run out for not after nine deliveries. I'm fairly certain she thought there was a single, a, a double run over there. So she returned for a single. She was more than halfway up the pitch. Unfortunately, her batting partner was not paying attention to what Ishita was doing. And by the time she saw and signaled, it was too late. Ishita lost her footing over there, slipped, and wasn't able to get back on time. That's a tragic end to her innings. And this brings Singapore to 59 for 7. That is called wide, quite rightly so. That ball was outside of those guidelines, uh, the guide, the markers, the wide markers that we have on the pitch nowadays, especially in the shorter format. Ooh, that one was called a bit wide as well. I, I think that might have been just a little harsh, uh, but obviously it's the umpire's call and he's the in a better position to give those um, balls out there that one is likely to be wide again as that one crosses the tram lines this time and has been called so that's three wides in succession preceded by a no ball uh, which is a little bit unfortunate as my yanagida has bowled really well thus far oh that's a much better ball kept out by the batter, no run on offer, and that brings us to the end of the 16th over. Singapore at 62 for 7, current run rate is hovering at 3.88, which is not too bad, it's definitely better than what Singapore did manage yesterday, so they should be happy about an incremental progress that they have demonstrated over here. Of the four remaining overs, if they could perhaps score another 15 to 20 runs, I think Singapore would be happy with their effort, especially considering the disastrous start that they had at the beginning when they were three down for three runs. Elena comes back for her fourth over and to finish her spell. That's a good ball to start up. Oh, the scorecard tells me it's uh, Shimako Kato. I thought that was Elena, my bad. I apologize for the error. So Kato-san comes back. This is her third over. Starts off really well. Ooh, that one lost its shape a little bit, just drifts outside of the leg stem behind the batter as it goes to the keeper. Rightly called a wide by umpire Burrs. And that adds another run to the Singaporean total. In comes Kato-san again. Batter manages to keep that out of the trajectory of the stumps, and that one is squirted towards the backward point region. No run over there. hit with a little bit more intent wanted this single 
clearly no single over available over there as the fielder was onto that ball in a flash. Um, there's definitely no room for any risk and quite wisely the batters remained in their respective halves on each end of the pitch. Cut the sun bowling really well over here. This one's likely to be another one. This one's hit a bit uppishly, fortunately for the batter, into the gap over there. And they complete one run as the fielder retrieves that ball and throws it back to the keeper. The Singaporean run rate steady at 3.8 and the runs coming along in a little bit of a steady trickle rather than in a flourish. Perhaps not a bad idea given the fact that there are seven wickets down and they've only got three wickets left in hand with most of their capable batters already out. So new batter on strike is Johanna Purankaran and she has faced two deliveries so far, managed to keep them out. Her role probably will be to provide able support to Lassia Bomaredi over there. Three overs left in this innings so far. Japan have done a really wonderful job in restricting Singapore to this total that they have and also making sure that they have got regular wickets. They have bowled well, they have bowled to a plan. And apart from those four consecutive extras by Yanagida-san, there haven't been that many bad deliveries out there. And now we see that Elena has returned. She is likely to bowl this over, and I suspect we might see Elia Chandel in the next one, or she might take the 20th. Nonetheless, a good decision to bring back Elena A little change in the field happening over there. One of the fielders has been instructed to move from the offside to the leg. And comes Elena over here, bolts it straight, batter hits it back, Elena feels it in her follow through, no run, and starts making her way back to her bowling mark. Given the change in regulations for the T20 internationals, the captains are urged to now speed the game up a little bit because if they fall behind the over rate, they get penalized. That's a wide down leg side, rightly called by umpire Newman over there. Yeah, so I was saying now there are penalties for teams who are not able to adhere to the over rate restrictions. And the penalties in the form of extra runs, uh, sorry, uh, one less fielder outside the circle, which can be quite risky. And players can take advantage by hitting aerial shots, just like the one we see on our screen now. So last year hit that, it's a big swipe, a sort of a hoik across the ball, and it goes into the vacant land on square leg region. This brings Johanna back on strike now. Let's see what she's able to do in this over. That's a full length ball. She's missed it, and that has hit the stumps. Johanna loses her wicket without struggling the scorers over here. That was a lovely slower delivery on off stump by Elena. Brilliant, beautiful piece of bowling over there. Just rolls her fingers as she releases that ball, gives it a nice little loop and a big dip. The batter misses it comprehensively, not able to get to the length of the ball at all. The ball slides underneath her bat, hits that off stake, and Singapore lose yet another wicket. They are now 66 for 8, and we are in the 18th over.
Charlotte Boyle is the new batter. She's on strike now. It comes Elena comes in. That's pulled just a little bit outside off stump. Charlotte manages to keep that along the ground. Charlotte's a very young player, just uh, 16 years of age, long career hopefully in the making with Singapore. Oh, well left outside off stump. She knows exactly where that wide marker is and let that ball go through shouldering arms in the process. Wide called by Empire Newman over there. Elena might want to get that ball tucked in a little bit much closer to the stumps as she can. That's a much better delivery. That was on off stump. Well kept out by young Charlotte over there. Charlotte's primarily in this team for her bowling, uh, but uh, she is expected to do a little bit with the bat now in seeing off the last two overs of this innings. That's a well-played stroke over there. Unfortunately for Charlotte, that goes straight to the fielder, and they were trying to attempt a cheeky little single, but sensibility prevailed, and her partner sent her scampering back. No run in the process. Singapore end the 18th over at 67 for 8. Elena finishes her spell of four overs with one for 18. A good bowling performance overall, um, especially given her return to the game after a long hiatus. As expected, we have Ahilia returning to finish her spell now. She has three for six of three overs, an absolutely wonderful spell of bowling opening this innings. And she comes in, delivers that ball, which is angled, aimed at the batter's legs, who manages to nip that, tuck that just behind square leg. And they take a single in the process. So Lashia is off the strike against Ahili, I think, sensible given the circumstances. Uh, given a choice, would you be facing Ahili or would you let your partner face Ahili? Especially if you have got very limited batting capabilities. Let's see how... Oh, young Charlotte has hit that ball straight up in the air. A good effort by the fielder over there who dived, but unfortunately the ball just fell short of her reach. Brilliant effort nonetheless. I think that might be Yanagida-san in that position over there at mid-off. That was a really good diving effort, a really, really good diving effort. We would have had another wicket on our hands and another one against Ahilia's name, but it wasn't to be. Next ball up. Lassia bats that, plays it into the ground, and that's a dot ball. And she comes again. Lovely little leap into her bowling stride. And that one's hit over extra cover into the gap. There's they take a single. That brings Charlotte Boyle again to the strike. Singapore have now reached 70 runs in this innings. Oh, that's a beautiful delivery there by Ahilia. Beautiful delivery angled across that batter. There was no way Charlotte was able to navigate that delivery. It was just too good for her. I wonder if Ahilia is likely to bring this one jagging back in. Oh, this one also angled across Charlotte, who sort of plays it very capably. Keeps it away from her stumps and sort of keeps it along the ground. Um, just wanted to mention that Ahilia is one of those rare left arm seamers who can actually take the ball away from a batter and bring it uh, swinging back in. Not just with swing, but also with seam movement too. So she is a really good long term prospect for the Japan team.
Kurumi Ota is going to bowl the last over of this innings. Question is, can she add to her tally over here? She's adjusting the field. And it's good to see that she's taking the lead in adjusting the field because I suspect she has a plan of her own as to how she wants to bowl to these two. She has one for six of three overs so far. This is her final over and the final over of the Singapore innings. Oh, that one's just lost its shape. She's lost control of that ball, which has gone wide down the leg side. Very, very well fielded by the keeper over there, Akari Nishimura. That was a good diving stop. In comes Otasan again. That one's a much more straighter delivery on the stumps. Well kept out by Lasya Bomareddy, who's batting on 8 of 21 deliveries so far. Make that 8 of 22. Another swing of the bat, doesn't make connection, the ball just sort of misses the inside edge as it dies down on its way to the keeper who collects it on the second bounce. Kurumi Ota has bowled a very, very economical spell uh, today, not, not given away, well, less than 10 runs is not a bad start. That one's just tucked around the corner at square leg. Fielder comes in running. Fields it quite well. Returns it back. And limiting the batters to just a single in the process. In comes Otasan again. Pulls that one. Once again, a very good delivery, keeps it tight, doesn't give the batter much room at all. There's no way Charlotte was able to free her arms over there and sort of slash at that. Um, she's played that very well, quite the, a percentage cricket shot, sort of respected that delivery and just kept it along the ground. Doesn't want to take unnecessary risks. Ooh, that's bold. That's a full delivery, sort of a dipping one. By the time it got to Charlotte, that almost turned into Yorker length, and that has dislodged both the stumps. And that was bang on middle stump, actually. Here, there we go. Let's watch the replay again. In she comes. There we go. That's just hit middle and off. Really, really good bowling by Kurumi Ota over here. Singapore now nine down. And there is a chance for Japan to get Singapore all out over here, especially if they get this last wicket on this last delivery. So last delivery coming up, Kurumi Ota right at the top of her mark. We have got uh, Ella Ungaman taking strike. She's trying to cover all those times as best as she can. Kurumi Ota-san comes in. Let's see what happens. And she's managed to make contact with that ball, which flies off the outside edge and makes its way to the third man boundary. So Singapore finish over here with a boundary. That is an exciting finish for them. Probably against the run of play a little bit. Probably not quite what Japan <laughs> might have expected or wanted. Uh, like a thickish outside edge flies right above the fielders and goes to the third man fence. Singapore finished the innings with 76 for 9, a significantly improved performance over their batting display yesterday. Kurumi Ota finishes her spell with 2 for 12 of 4 overs, a wonderful display of bowling. Here we see the batting.